I don't know everything about LinkedIn growth, but if there is one thing that I'm exceptional at is generating leads and booking sales meetings on LinkedIn using Sales Navigator. And that's exactly what we're going to be covering today. In the last three years, I've used LinkedIn to generate millions in revenue for bootstrap startups, turn it into the biggest acquisition channel for a scale-up and implemented it across 100 client campaigns as an agency owner. And clients pay thousands for these exact same strategies. So in this video, I'm going to break down everything that you need to know about using Sales Navigator to book sales calls and generate consistently qualified leads. And we'll cover my exact process for generating warm pipeline using Sales Navigator, the hidden filters on Sales Navigator nobody talks about, how to build a properly targeted lead list and search on Sales Navigator, how to automate 80% of your manual work that you're doing today, and how to turn this into the predictable revenue engine for you and your team. Before we go into the actual filters and I show you how you can actually use Sales Navigator to filter out and build your perfect lead list, I will say that the work actually happens way before that. It happens with you sitting down with your notebook, with your Notion page, and actually creating your deep understanding of your ICP and building something that I like to call a scrapable persona. Scrapable persona are all of the characteristics about your ICP that can be used as filters in Sales Navigator. So something that is common across all of these people, all of your ICP, all of those leads that actually make your persona scrapable on LinkedIn. This could be filters such as geography, company size, the number of employees, company and lead location, industry that they're in, title of your decision maker, title of your champion. So all of these things like try to kind of segment your ICP. Additionally, your ICP might be extensive. So you might be covering also SMBs, mid-market or enterprise clients and your product could serve most of them. What you don't want to do is you don't want to go into Sales Navigator and try to build as big of a list as possible with all of your potential leads and just blast them. What you want to do is segment your ACP into buckets. Right now here, you're seeing my own search that I'm running and you can see that I've actually created a flow for me to find the agency owner that are focused in LinkedIn outreach and are based in EMEA. One of the key things that you're going to be looking at is the company headcount. This will basically help you dissect your ICP into small companies, mid-sized companies, and then enterprise companies. In my case, I'm targeting agency owners and agencies typically have small number of employees. It could be one, two people in the company. So I'm going to go with a company headcount of 1 to 10, sometimes even 11 to 50, and then also self-employed. This already segmenting a big list of leads on Sales Navigator to the ones that are fitting my ICP. What you want to take a look at next is the company headquarters location. Keep in mind that there are two geographies and locations that you can find on Sales Navigator. One is company-based and then one is person-based. This basically means that company headquarters location, if you select that option, is going to give you the location of the company itself and where it's registered while the lead itself that you're going to be getting on a list might be living in another country. So you could have a company headquartered in US while the lead is in Spain. So make sure that if you're actually doing outreach based on the territory, you're a sales rep that is focused on, let's say, Spain as a primary market to put also filters for a persona level, not only headquarters, so that you're making sure you're reaching out to the leads in that specific geography. In my case, I actually want a company headquarters to be in EMEA because that's what I'm targeting. So I'm just going to put this small filter here. Now we come into the role. A role are most likely one of the most important filters on Sales Navigator. There is a difference between function and current job title. Function is actually the department that you're trying to focus and target, while current job title is actually the top job title of your lead. If your ICP is not as clear when it comes to what is the actual title of that lead, but you know that they would fall into the finance department, you would put here in finance and would leave the job title empty. This will give you like all of the leads in the finance department that you can then skim through and actually choose which one could actually be a fit. In my case, department for agents, it doesn't really make sense because it's a small company. So I'm going to leave this empty. However, I am going to focus on the current job title. And that's where you can also do not only include filters such as like, I want to target CEOs, founders, co-founders, but you can also exclude. So if you don't want to target interns, junior people, etc., you can easily exclude them here. So in my case, I want to go with C 
CEOs. I want to go with the co-founder, owner, and I'm currently getting three titles. And as you can see, my list is quite huge still. So like I have 2 million results of people that are fitting into this industry. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually filter this a bit more. I actually want to exclude also. So if I'm going to go with intern, I'm going to select intern and then click on exclude options. Seniority level is a filter that is typically used just for you to decide whether you're going like after a top decision maker or a champion. So if you're targeting VPs, C-level, etc., make sure to put in seniority level right here. You might be tempted to say, I'm reaching out to anybody in sales. However, VP of sales versus SDR don't have the exact same pain points. That messaging is not going to be the same. The value prop is not going to be the same. So you want to dissect this into two searches. Build one list for C-level, which could be in this case, let's go with VP or let's say director, senior, vice president. And this would be your search for C-level decision makers within your industry. However, if you want to go ahead with SDRs, account executives, etc., that would be a separate search. The idea really here is to segment it as much as possible. Now, in my case, seniority level doesn't really matter, but I'm going to put director, owner, senior, and just kind of leave it at this point. The following filters that could be interesting for you are years in current company. This would basically help you to maybe potentially target the leads that have recently switched companies and fresh blood in a company that is willing to experiment, maybe implement new strategies. So with this option, you would go with less than a year. Let's go into the geographical location of a lead itself. So in my case, I'm just going to put EMEA as a market and get the leads that are all based in EMEA as a part of my search. Now let's go into the next step, which is the actual industry. Industry is going to be critical when you're doing outreach because obviously you want to focus on only the industries that actually make sense for you. If you're actually thinking about, okay, you're selling software products to SaaS businesses, don't just go with IT industry itself, go with software development. Try to dissect and actually go very granular in the industry itself. Here you will be able to put in your industries and as you can see, we have a lot of them in place. In my case, I'm gonna leave the industry empty simply because for my ICP, it's already very hard to find them. So I don't want to limit my search too much. You will see for which reason. I'm going to actually leave this empty and then we're going to go to the next step. As you can see, my list is huge at the moment. I have more than 1 million results based on the search that I've implemented here. And I am definitely sure that I'm not targeting agencies. The reason for this is because industry for agencies doesn't really exist. You can't really filter it out that easily using just the filters. So for that reason, I'm going to go and actually look for keywords and I'm going to put in here agency and lead generation. What you are seeing here is use of keywords using the asterisks and adding the and function or function or not function itself. So I can say like agency and lead generation, not branding. What this basically means is that I'm going to be looking for leads that are focused on being on that have agency lead generation in their profile description without any branding itself. So what will happen here when I actually click on this, I'm going to list of 4k results. So my list is already way more segment and that it was from 1 million people, I'm now ending up with 4,000 results. And from what I'm kind of able to scan right now, going through this list, I'm actually looking and recognizing some of the companies that I actually want to reach out to and that are pitting my ICP. This means that in this search here, this is going to be your gold mine. If you have specifically very tricky ICP and you're not able to search it properly, use the Boolean search to actually look for keywords. 4k list of leads is already good enough. I can work with 4k leads. However, if I want to segment this a bit more to actually dissect it and have a relevant outreach, I can actually look at the buying intents here. So you can see that out of the 4,000 leads that I have here, 79 are following my company. So I can select that as an option. And then for those 79 people, my messaging for them would be something along the lines of, I see that you've been following our company for a while now. Have you actually done some LinkedIn outreach at scale so far? How are you overcoming LinkedIn limitations, etc. to start a conversation? But I do have this relevant intro initially because I'm just using the fact that they're following my company. And on top of this, this makes me aware that they're already aware of K-Reach, which means that I'm now in a position where I can actually sell to them with knowing they actually are warm leads and are actually aware of the product we are building. On top of this, I can see that nine people out of these 4K have viewed my profile recently, which means that they're quite warm leads, hot leads that I can actually reach out to afterwards. This entire segment here actually allows you to segment these lists 
as much as you want to have personalized outreach. So I can also go with change jobs and I will have 168 people that have recently changed jobs that are fitting my ACP and I can start off my messaging with that. One of the, my favorite filters that are is quite under leveraged and underused on LinkedIn is posted on LinkedIn filter. If you're not really sure if your ACP is active on LinkedIn, if LinkedIn is a good channel for you, or if your audience is likely to accept your connection request, check out this filter here, which is posted on LinkedIn. By selecting this option, you will see out of the global search that you have built, how many people have actually been active in the last 30 days on LinkedIn, which also will not give you just the view of whether you have active audience on LinkedIn, but also will give you a list of people who are more active so that when you do send a connection request, the chance of you getting accepted is going to be higher. If you're actually focused on achieving high connection acceptance rates and consequently reply rates, go ahead and check out this filter. So now you have this list of, in my case, 1,500 leads, perfect list for you to reach out to. However, you're wondering, well, out of all of these people, what if they're actually my customer? So if you actually want to exclude your current customers or people that you have messaged in the past, there are filters on LinkedIn that can help you do this. One thing that you will check out here is the people you have interacted with. So if you want to reach out only to people you have never messaged in the past, go ahead and select the option to exclude the people you have messaged in the past. This basically means that you will get a list of people you've never had any outreach to so that you can actually take the leads that you want to reach out to that haven't been messaged by you in the past. We have now already filtered out my list quite a lot, but now I want to exclude all of our current customers. The way to do it is by using this option here, account list. Here you will see that I can actually upload and include my previously saved account list. So going to Sales Navigator, Account Filters, you're going to create your list of leads that are current customers. Account Filters. And as you can see, a part of the workflow for accounts is the companies that exist in your CRM. I unfortunately don't have the CRM integration currently here, but you will be able to enable this option to create a list of leads that are companies in your CRM and then exclude them from the list. The way that you would do it is when you actually have an account list saved, you will go here and simply exclude that account list. Second option where where this might be useful. Let's say you have built a perfect lead list, but now you want to actually build out a bit more on the account level. Account level search is actually going to help you dissect this list a bit more. As you can see on the account level, you can actually put in what is the annual revenue of that company. So you can go that you want to reach out to companies that are between 1 million and 10 million in revenue. The company headcount can be 1 to 10 in my case. Company headcount growth can be from 15% to above, etc. So as you can see, account level list gives you a lot more information, such as the annual revenue, company head headcount, headcount growth to see if they've been hiring, if they've been growing in the past, headquarters location, industry itself, department headcount. So if you're reaching out to sales teams and you want to make sure that you have a big sales team in place to reach out to, obviously the department headcount is going to come into the picture, technologies that they've used, etc. This search itself for the account level is going to be super helpful. Typically, people have problems with, well, I have an account search, but now I need leads to find in those people. So so the way to do it is again, we're going to save this search and I'm going to manage my saved searches, change the copy. So in my case, it will be agency account filters, click on save. So when you can filter out your accounts, you're going to go back to the lead list and you're going to actually find that account list that you have saved. Make sure to include it or exclude it depending on what your goal is. This basically will allow you to match account filters with lead filters and have like unified view of all of the leads that are actually matching your ICP on the account level and the lead level. I want to segment this a bit more so that I'm actually have a personalized outreach and I'm just going to say I want to reach out to only the people that are following my company and that's going to be like a mini campaign that I'm going to run in two days. Otherwise, what I can do also here is that I can say that I want to only people that have posted on LinkedIn. So I get like 1k leads of people that have been active in the last month that are fitting my ICP and that I can reach out to afterwards. You have this perfectly targeted lead list that you want to reach out to. It's 1k leads perfectly fitting into your ICP. So what do we do now? If we take a manual approach, what I would personally do is I would always search, save this search so that you weekly get a new results for this search and then you manually work off of it. So the first thing that we would be doing here is actually going through this list and qualifying them, checking out if they actually fit our needs, if they fit our ICP. And if they do, you can simply click on save to 
add them to a new list of lists that you can continuously go with. As you can see here, I have some previously saved lists or I can create a new one. Other option is that I can actually view this profile to dig a bit more deeper into them and like what they're doing, connect with them automatically or message them straight from the sales navigator. This is a manual way of like you building out your outreach, but either way, like it is something that you can still do if you just want to focus on using sales navigator. However, there are some issues with doing this manually. First of all, are you really going to go every single day and connect with 25 people, send the connection requests, send the messages, etc. It might get a bit messy and obviously inconsistent. Second thing is LinkedIn does have its limitations. So LinkedIn will never tell you what is their preferred number of outreach that you can do per day but if you do exceed the limitations there is a chance that you can actually get banned so even when doing manual outreach on linkedin if you're exceeding the number of connection requests and messages that are recommended to be sent per day you can easily get flagged by linkedin and put your accounts into jeopardy what you want to do is you actually want to make sure that you're not sending out more than 25 connection requests per day or more than 40 messages per day to stick with some safe limits on linkedin now you can do this manually track how many connection requests you sent, how many messages you have sent, or you can automate this entire process. So I have this 1k list of leads. I want to get them in a CSV file. I want to get them in a list where I can actually visually see them to actually influence the list a bit, edit it, add more functionalities, etc. And I want to automate my outreach. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use KReach to scrape this list of leads automatically into the spreadsheet. Manual outreach is all good and well if you're doing this sporadically, but if you actually want to maintain consistency and also make sure that your account is staying safe and protected, you do want to automate some of these actions. Now, ideal workflow here is that you take this 1k list of leads and going from there, you add them to a list, you create automated campaign that sends connection requests, messages, follow-up messages, view profiles, and are able to reach out automatically to those leads under the recommended limits. Creating your lead list is one thing, but then how do you leverage actually the full power of Sales Navigator? That's where we're gonna go into the accounts. I'm going to go to the, one of the companies that I have previously saved and actually let's imagine that this is a company that I want to do outbound on. I want to get all of the insights about this company that I can use for outreach itself. So going to the Preply in this case as an example, I'm going to be able to see a bit more information on the account itself. So I can see the Relationship Explorer part here, which basically gives me an information of who in the company I'm connected with that I can reach out to. So you can see that I have ability to create personas, give them functions, seniority etc and they will be popping up here as people that i can actually reach out to and use as a leverage to actually get more insights then we have like the relationship map which basically gives you an ability to create a visual map of who you want to reach out to you can say that jan here is a decision maker and then elisa is a champion this gives you visibility whenever you're working on the account long term you're doing account mapping how you actually want to work off of this lead list and then whenever you're doing the outreach itself you're able to kind of map out where they are in the funnel and how important they are and what messaging you should be able to use. All of these things are super helpful for you when you're actually trying to do enterprise sales and are doing a deep research on the account. Now on the all account alerts, you can also filter the accounts based on the recent updates. So whether they have new decision makers in place, whether they have some specific growth signals, account updates, and you can actually check what's been going on with the company. All of these things are super useful, specifically if you're doing enterprise sales as with the SMBs and mid-market where you need to do ad volume outreach, this is not going to be insanely helpful, but it is something where you can actually have consistent updates, especially if you do get a reply and you want to have a bit more information on the lead before you actually start managing the conversation. Now you have the full understanding of how to use Sales Navigator to find and target your perfect leads, but finding the right prospects is just the step one. The real challenge is how do you actually target and message these people at scale, especially in mind with LinkedIn messaging limits, safely and compliantly. And that's exactly why we built this video where you can see how you can send 1000 LinkedIn DMs per week completely on autopilot, safely and compliantly. Check it out and I'll see you there.